your reflections on your time uh, with O.J. Simpson? Well, it was a very dramatic time in American history. The country was divided along racial lines and the evidence was divided. Uh, there was overwhelming evidence that might suggest that he did it. And then there was one piece of evidence that was tampered with, the sock that had his blood and the blood of the victim on it. And we were able to prove that the blood was poured by police officer Van Adder and it contained a chemical in it that's found in test tubes, but not in the human body. And so the jury concluded that a, a very important piece of evidence was tampered with by the government. And that's the reason they acquitted. They didn't trust the rest of the evidence. And it really sent a very important message to police officers and prosecutors that if you tamper with evidence, even in a strong case, the jury is not going to believe you. And Alan, talk to us about America, but specifically LA at that time, in, in through the prism of that sort of racial tension and the, you know, mm -hmm. the reputation of the LAPD, who uh, themselves were involved in the investigation, of course, into the killing of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. The LAPD had a terrible reputation. Uh, it had a reputation for planting evidence. It had a reputation for racial discrimination. It had a reputation for being almost a Marine Corps um, uh, some people called it an occupying army in the black community. So uh, the most important thing in the case was to pick a jury that would be understanding of that. And we picked a jury that consisted primarily of African-Americans and the prosecution um, was satisfied with the jury because it contained a, a, a number of black women. And uh, we had a jury expert who told us that black women are more likely to identify as blacks than as women. And the prosecution thought the opposite, and uh, uh, the, the verdict proved that we were probably correct in our assessment of, of the jury. But the most important piece of evidence was the framed piece of evidence, uh, the sock with the blood on it that had a chemical in it, not found in the human body, but found in test tubes. So that was the reason, largely the reason for the acquittal. The sock rather than the gloves. Everyone will remember that uh, that moment when uh, he tries on the gloves in the trial. They yeah. don't fit perfectly. Uh, is it right that they had been in a freezer or in some kind of deep storage and had shrunk slightly? So that's part of the reason very, why they didn't fit? Very likely. I was sitting literally two, just a couple of feet away from him when he tried on the glove. The prosecution could have had him try on the glove outside the hearing of the jury but they foolishly and arrogantly decided not to. And when he put it on, he went up to the jurors and he said, they're too small. And at that point, I was able to persuade him not to testify. I said to him, OJ, you've already testified. You went to the jury, you told them, you showed them that the glove was too small and you weren't cross-examined. And so you don't have to testify and he didn't. And then of course he testified at the criminal case, at the civil case, and he was, uh, he was uh, uh, convicted in the civil case. So it proved that we were right in not having him testify. We'll come on to some of that in a minute, if we can, uh, Alan. But let's just go back to, to sort of the moment this began on our television screen, certainly, with that car chase. And obviously, you were in the country at the time, in the city at the time, you were watching that. What were your feelings as you saw this beginning? I mean, you didn't know at that point you were going to be hired. No, I was not his lawyer. I was watching the National Basketball Association finals with my family in Charleston, South Carolina. And I said to them, that proves he's probably guilty and he may commit suicide. Um, you know, it was one of the largest watched events in the history of television. Everybody was, because nobody knew what the outcome would be. And um, he, he didn't. And then he hired me a few days later to be one of his lawyers, I took the case because it was at that point a capital case. He was facing the death penalty and I never turned down capital cases. And then uh, I continued to help him as a consultant largely. I argued some of the cases in front of the uh, jury. Um, but, um, but uh, uh, you know, it was a very divisive case in America, divided along racial lines, divided along lines of whether people saw the trial or didn't. It was interesting. People who actually watched the trial um, we're not surprised at the verdict as much as people who read about it in newspaper accounts, because the newspapers, for example, didn't present the evidence of the sock very uh, effectively. But if you saw it in person, you realize that there was a problem with the government's evidence. If I may, Alan, can you take us inside sort of the, the room, the consultation rooms when you were there with OJ and with Johnny Cochran and with the, the rest of what was called the dream team? Um, what were those conversations like? I mean, you guys, a lot of, I can imagine there was a lot of ego in those rooms, well, all trying to... 
it wasn't a dream team. It was a nightmare team. Everybody was fighting with each other. Um, people were uh, having very different views. There was great division about whether you should take the stand or not. I think I was the leading proponent of him not taking the stand. And F. Lee Bailey was the leading proponent of his taking the stand. And uh, ultimately, it was the glove uh, when he was able to go in front of the jury and show them that the glove didn't fit that led him to conclude, and he made the decision not to take the stand. In the civil case, he took the stand and was mm. immediately found liable. Yeah, so look, in the criminal trial then, he wanted to all the way up to that point to, to go and defend himself on the stand, did he? He wanted to take the stand and we persuaded him not to. Right. So when you oh. get to the... Sorry, Alan, when you get to the point of, 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 of acquittal, that's the end of, of sort of your... Uh, part in, in that trial, but then, as you mentioned, it goes to the, to the civil trial. And, and what did you make of that process? Were you a, well, a, a watcher had, of that as well? I had advised him to try to settle the case, um, advised him once he got the acquittal to try to disappear, not be part of the public, but he insisted on remaining in the public. And um, he uh, um, you know, ultimately went to jail on other grounds um, as well.